In the monarchies of the late 18th and 19th century Europe, there started to appear a strange phenomenon. You can see this in action by looking at this list of French kings. It goes from Louis XVI to Louis XVIII. I mean, it might just be that the French can't count, but I digress. You can see another example of this in the Bonaparte dynasty. There have only ever been two Bonaparte emperors, we'll get to that later, but they are Napoleon I and Napoleon III. Now you would think they would just go Louis I straight through Louis XVII, or Napoleon I to Napoleon II, and be done with it. I mean, that is the way it's normally done. Heirs do not normally get a number until they have ruled. But due to both sides wanting to maintain legitimacy and downplaying the reigns of the other house, house being the Bourbon and Bonaparte families, both families recognized monarchs who never really ruled. The son of Louis XVI, who died in a Parisian prison at the age of 10, he was dubbed Louis XVII by Bourbon supporters after they retook the throne in 1814. And Napoleon I's son, who debatably reigned as emperor in 1815 for a few days, and died in 1832 at the age of 21, became Napoleon II, only after Napoleon III proclaimed himself the third. I think it is safe to say if either of these families had not come back into power, we would not refer to these two individuals with regnal numbers. This brings us to the title of the video. These numbers that distinguish similarly named monarchs of the same country are called regnal numbers. And as demonstrated by France, they may be a lot more complicated than at first glance. The good old British monarchy. It's the baseline for all modern monarchies today, right? They've made it this long, they should have their numbering system worked out. Well, sort of. Originally, England and Scotland were obviously two separate monarchies, and eventually the King of Scotland, through the line of succession, after Elizabeth I died childless, became King of England. The problem was, James VI, King of Scotland, was the sixth James of Scotland, but the first James to become King of England. So he was King James VI of Scotland, and James I of England concurrently. His grandson was King James VII and II. As you can see, he also had a similar problem. The Charleses, however, did not have this issue. Mary II, co-ruler with William III, William of Orange, actually really lucked out, and there happened to be a Mary I of England and a Mary I of Scotland, two different people, so she got a nice clean break, being a simple Mary II. While her husband William was not so lucky, being the third William in England and the second William in Scotland. Then came the glorious Acts of Union of 1707 to clean up this mess of the two kingdoms into the one kingdom of Great Britain. Surely they fixed the problem in a piece of legislation designed to unite the two crowns. Spoiler, they did not address the problem. This double regnal number system actually was not a problem for 123 years after the Acts of Union, since the subsequent Queen Anne and four King Georges were the respective firsts in both countries. When William IV became King of England, they simply ignored the problem. He was simply William IV, King of Great Britain. As one can imagine, this pissed off some Scots. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! This controversy continued up through both modern Edward VII and Edward VIII, who the Scottish posit should also be considered the first and second and even up to the modern-day Queen Elizabeth II herself, as Queen Elizabeth I was not Queen of Scotland. This actually has a very real impact. The Queen's royal cipher, this thing, appears on everything in England. Note the two. However, take a look at the Scottish equivalent. There's no the second. When Queen Elizabeth ascended to the throne, many post boxes and other things with the royal cipher were vandalized and blown up in Scotland. Since then, the two, or the second, and even the ER, does not appear in Scotland. What does this mean going forward for the British monarchy? Well, luckily, Charles won't actually have this problem. Charles being the third Charles in both countries. But Prince William certainly will have this issue, being the fifth William of England, but the fourth William of Scotland. Now, interestingly enough, Winston Churchill actually came up with a very clever way to solve this issue. He suggests taking the highest regnal number between the English and Scottish lines. Notice he didn't say crowns, since they are both now a singular crown. It is more recognition that both once were two crowns that came together to form one Great Britain. So an example would be Prince William would be the fifth, as the fifth is obviously higher than the fourth. But the nice thing is this rule also works retroactively back to the Act of Union in 1707, since all the monarchies with differing regnal numbers, the English one was higher, which is the one they used anyway. William IV, Edward VII, Edward VIII, and Elizabeth II. 
This rule is by no means official, and Churchill even said the monarchy shouldn't bind itself to this rule. I have a permit. This just says I can do what I want. The Duke of Cambridge is really the only current heir to have to consider this a problem, as his son Prince George will simply be George VII. Some other notable regnal number confusion happens to be in Germany, or really, Prussia. Personally, as a history buff, I can usually keep track of monarch names, but the only country I literally am incapable of this is in Prussia. Instead of just naming their heirs Frederick or William, and then numbering them accordingly, they also threw in Frederick William. And it doesn't work like, oh yes, he is both a Frederick and a William, so he gets to be Frederick II and William I. Thank God they didn't do that. It works as its own separate name, independent from the Fredericks and the Williams. It's, it's just so hard to keep track when there's three sets of names that use two names. If that, I, it's, it's hard to even describe. And it's honestly a little bit ridiculous. Why are you the way that you are? Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. There's also some funny business going on with the recent pope who took the name of the two popes before him, John the 23rd and Paul the 6th, becoming John Paul. Notice following the same rule as the Germans and that it's its own name. But oddly enough, he was the first pope to use the first while he was still alive. Albeit only for 33 days because he ended up being the shortest lasting pope ever. One last thing worth mentioning is in the United States, obviously we have a presidential system and we don't assign a regnal number to our presidents. But what happens when two presidents have the exact same name? A matching last name is actually not that rare but also not that big of a problem because it is just easy to distinguish them using their first names, i.e. Theodore Roosevelt and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. But we have two cases where the two sets of presidents have the exact first name and last name, father and son in both cases, the John Adamses and the George Bushes. Now, I don't think this is on purpose or a set rule at all, but it's worth noting that in both cases, everyone went by using their middle name to distinguish between father and son, John Adams versus John Quincy Adams, and George Bush, and George W. Bush. And it's worth noting, if Donald Trump Jr. ever became president, this would mess up this informal rule as he shares the same middle name, John, as his father. Clearly, regnal numbers are not so straightforward as they would first seem. Sources will be down below as always.